Now when it comes to becoming a highly valued video editor, the simple things such as pop-ups can be what make or break your success. I still see so many editors making super boring, ugly looking pop-ups and that just has to stop. So that's why in this video you learn all the secrets to making super high quality premium pop-ups with the right effects, smooth movements, to impress your clients and just take your editing to the next level. You'll find all the assets we'll be working on in the description below. So go ahead and grab those and we'll get straight into After Effects. All right, now we're inside After Effects and I have imported the footage into the project panel. So I have this practice footage clip. You can use any footage you want, but you can also use this one you find it in the description. And then I have this After Effects logo PNG file, which we'll be working on. Go ahead and grab this practice footage and drag it over to this composition icon to get it to fit nicely into a new comp. Then I'll take the After Effects logo and I'll get it right there above the footage. Great. Now this is what we'll make a pop up of. And first off, you can start by scaling it down and I wanted to make a nice little pop-up coming from the left and appearing right here I want the camera to zoom in on it and I want to make it look awesome with effects and smooth movements so that's exactly what we'll do now the first thing you want to do when doing pop-ups is take on the proportional grid so clicking here and selecting it right there and this allows you to get it perfectly symmetrical to the face and get it perfectly aligned with enough space here and the same amount of space here. Now that looks pretty good in my opinion, so I'm gonna take the grid off. And now I want the pop-up to come from the left and I want it to kind of come from away and come forward a bit. And I also want it to add a subtle rotation and I just wanna make it look awesome. And we're gonna make keyframes. So press P on your keyboard for position and click the stopwatch icon. Then you wanna press S on your keyboard for scale and press this, then press R for rotation and make a keyframe. Now you can hit U on your keyboard to see all the keyframes. Perfect. And now you can look at this preview time thing and we can see we're at 2 seconds and 13 milliseconds. So we just want to go 1 second back. Doesn't have to be perfect obviously. Doesn't have to be exact. We got it right there. Alright, and now what I'll do is I'll make the rotation a bit like this. So just decrease this rotation slider. And then I'll drag it off the screen so you can drag this thing while holding shift to make it go fast and now we have it away from the screen and the last thing we'll do is we'll make the scale zero and now if we play it back you can see exactly what i talked about from it coming so i wanted to wanted it to come from away and forward and we got exactly that and now it looks like absolute dog shit and that's because it's incredibly linear so you're going to select the keyframes here and you're going to press f9 then you go over to the graph editor and you select all of these and you want to pull these yellow dots while holding shift and you can see the influence value i'm going to make that around 70 percent so around 70 percent for both of them doesn't have to be perfect but something like this and what this does is makes it insanely smooth amazing now you can go over here and you can click this motion blur thing and what this does is when it's moving you can see it's all blurry which adds to the realism side of things so it makes it look pretty awesome now we have this that already looks so good but we're not done yet, now we'll get into effects. And for this instance, the first effect I want to add is a four color gradient. So this one, you can search them in the effects and presets panel here, or you can use the plugin. And now, <laughs> now it looks like this. We obviously don't want this. So go over to the effect controls and you can see this blending mode here. And I'm going to change this to multiply. So it goes from the colors showing on top of it to making it a subtle little gradient which is awesome, exactly what we want. And now I'm gonna be super boring, I'm just gonna make the first two colors white and the last two colors black. Now you can make the colors anything you like, you can do some really sick gradients with this. Well, I'm just gonna do this for the sake of simplicity. And now once you select the effect, you can see these four dots and we can kinda move around these t dots to get some type of effect, anything you like, you can play around with this all you like, maybe add a bit more shadow and make it glow a bit more. And now it already looks so good. So you can see the before and after here, it looks super bland, super boring, ugly looking logo. And just with one effect, it already has so much more depth. Great, the next effect I'll add is a glow. And now the secret trick with glows is to add actually two glows. So for the first glow, what I'll do is I'll make the glow intensity 0.12. That's what I always do. And then I'll up the radius to around 40. It's pretty good. And I'll decrease the threshold to something like something like this, 32. And now what this glow does is it makes the letters just glow, literally. Here's the before 
and just with a simple glow the letters pop so much more and that looks incredibly good perfect now what i'll do is i'll actually duplicate this glow so you can press command d on your keyboard or whatever you have it set to and for the second glow what i'll do is i'll keep the glow intensity the same but i'll up the radius to around 100 110 and maybe i'll decrease the threshold a bit and this adds a subtle glow around the edge and it also adds a bit more to the letters as well so here's the before without the second glow and here's with the second glow looks really really good all right next effect i'm gonna add a cc light sweep so this one and now you can see this light sweep going across the logo but this is actually not what we want yet so you can go over to the effect controls and you see the sweep intensity i'm gonna make that zero actually and i'll up the edge intensity quite a bit and i'll increase the width i'll also make this direction come a bit bit more from the left so like that and then i'll increase the edge thickness and the intensity a bit more and now you see what this does it adds a really subtle glow to the edge of the icon awesome without it it's just a 2d icon but this adds a bit more 3d look and it adds the realism now we got this awesome little glow on the edge perfect now what i'll do is i'll add a second light sweep and I'm going to add it from here. I don't want to copy it because the settings are kind of messed up on this one. So I'll just add a second light sweep. And for this one, we're actually going to make the light animate through the logo. So what I'll do is I'll change the direction to around 45 because I want it to come from the top left and go to the bottom right. And what I'll do is I'll increase the width a bit to around maybe right 90. Then I actually want to change the shape to smooth. Some people like the sharp, but I prefer the smooth. So that's what I'm going to do. And you can decrease the intensity, maybe a bit, increase it, whatever you like. I'm not here to tell you exactly what to do. I'm just giving you an idea what you could do. And now to animate the light sweep going across, I'm going to place my playhead at the end of the keyframes. You can grab this dot or you can grab this center thing. And I'm just going to make it outside of the logo. So right here. Then I'll make a keyframe for the center. And I will go a few frames forward, maybe half a second or something. And you can grab this dot and just drag it to the bottom right. Perfect. Now you can press U on your keyboard to see them and just make a simple easy so F9. And now we have this light going across. I'm going to make it a bit longer and let's see how that looks. Really good. Now what I'll do is I'll make it start a bit sooner. So around here, I'm going to grab both of them and just make it here. So that's, that way, when it arrives, it's already animated. That's awesome. Perfect. Next effect I'll do is I'll add a noise. So this one. And the noise, what it does is it makes it, makes it look a bit grainy. Which some people say they like it, some people say they don't. But I like it, so I don't really care. I'm gonna add it. You can't even see it that much, but it does, in fact, make it a bit more grainy. Just trust me. <laughs> even though you can't really see it that much. Okay, great. How's this looking? Let's see the before and after. Super bland, boring, ugly, no clients, no money, nothing. By watching my content, sick pop-up, money, clients, everyone wants your editing. This is awesome. Top 1%. Great. That looks really good. Now there's one more effect you can add if you want to. And that is a posterized time. So what the posterized time does is it basically makes it look laggy. So it decreases the frame rate. And I'll usually do a frame rate of 15. So it's just gonna make it a bit laggy and I actually quite like this effect so I'm gonna add it but you don't have to if you don't want to whatever you prefer. Perfect. There's actually one more thing I forgot to mention which will save you years on After Effects. Literal years. And that's making a preset of this. So if you want to make, make it really easy to have pop-ups like this every single time in seconds what you can just do is you can just select this first effect scroll all the way down and hold shift and click this last effect and go over to animation and save animation preset. Click this, save it on your computer and then you can find it over in the effects and presets panel. And you can just take the effect and you can just grab it and put it on every pop-up you use. And you don't actually have to do all of this work of putting the effects one by one, which is a lot of work. And yeah, make sure you do this. It's really gonna save you time. Now, if you remember, I said I want the camera to zoom in on the logo as it comes. So what I'll do is I'll press U to see the keyframes and I'll go to the first set of keyframes. Then I'll take this pick whip icon of the After Effects logo and I will grab it and drag it over to the footage. Now what this does is basically whatever changes we make to the footage, the logo stays in place. And if we didn't do this, 
this would happen. Yeah, it's kind of messed up. So do that, go to the first set of keyframes and make a keyframe for the footage and scale and position. So press S and P on your keyboard and make keyframes. Then you can hit U to see all the keyframes and go to the last set of keyframes on the logo and I'll make the scale around 125. That's a good amount I usually do. And then just make the position go to the logo. So like that. Perfect. Now you're gonna easy ease this. Now here's a trick you can use to get the exact same graph really quickly. So you can select the keyframes of the logo and go to the graph editor and simply just place your playhead right at the peak. So exactly here. Then without moving the playhead, you're gonna go to the graph editor of the footage keyframes and you're just gonna make the exact same graph. Make the graph in the middle of the playhead just like it was like this. And now once we play this back, it's silky smooth. That's insanely smooth. Like that's actually smooth. Okay, that's sick. I'm also gonna add motion blur to the footage so it's a bit better, it doesn't do much, but why not? Now there's one more thing I wanna add, which is say, there's one more thing I wanna do, is I wanna make the background here a bit darker as the pop-up comes to place. So what I'll do is I'll right click here on an empty space and I'll make a new solid and just make a black solid. Perfect. Now you can place it under the logo and you can press Q on your keyboard to get the rectangle tool. Make sure the solid is, solid is selected and go around here and make mask like this. Then you can see the mask settings here and you can press inverted and you can press M three times on your keyboard to get more of the mask settings. And now what I'll do is I'll increase the feather not that much, but quite a bit. And I'll make the expansion a bit smaller. It's a bit too big of a mask. And increase the feather a bit more. Just play around with these settings till you get a subtle shadow to the background. A subtle darkness, kind of like this. Without it, the logo doesn't really pop. But with it, you can see the logo pops a lot more. You can decrease the opacity a bit if you want. And just play around with the settings to get them looking really good. I like this. And the way we'll animate it is we'll just press T on your keyboard and make a opacity frame. Make the opacity frame like halfway when the logo is there and go to the start and just make it zero. You can also easy ease this if you want to. Perfect. I'll make the last keyframe a bit further away. Yeah, that looks really good. Now what's left is to actually get rid of the logo. It can't just stay there for the whole video. And it's the easiest thing ever, you're gonna select these keyframes, control C, control V, you're gonna select these keyframes, control C, go a bit forward, control V, and you can see the logo going away. Same thing for the solid and the footage, control C, control V, this is obvious stuff. Yeah, I think we're pretty much done here, let's see what kind of pop-up we actually got. Perfect. Only thing, it leaves a bit too quickly, so just extend the keyframes and here you have an amazing pop-up to really impress your clients and take your editing to the next level. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and also let me know how I can improve these videos and also let me know what you want to see next. If you want to see more of my stuff, you can check out this video here or here, I don't know where it is about me recreating an Imangaji animation step by step from scratch. Make sure to check that out, there's some real value in that one. That's all from me, take care and I'll see you in the next one.